So this is the Fire Maple Trident gas canister stove. I've been using it now for almost four months. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on it, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Fire Maple for sending out the Trident Butane gas canister stove so that I can share it with you. So when I became aware of this stove on Fire Maple's website, I asked if they would send it out because I do have a number of isobutane stoves, but none that run strictly off of butane cylinders like this one. Now, yes, I know there are adapters you can attach to any of the stoves to run with uh, butane, but this one is designed specifically, and there's the adapter, I'll show you how it works in a minute, for running off of butane cylinders. And I wanted to see, one, how would it operate, and two, what the, uh, what the economy of it is of it, because I was aware of just how much cheaper butane is to buy than isobutane. So that's the backstory. So what I thought I would do is just give you a few close-ups on it. I'll give you some specifications, which of course will be in the video description below. I'll show you how it operates, but it's a bright day out here. You're not going to see a whole lot of the flame, but just the same, I will do it for you. And then we'll wrap this video up. All right, I folded the stove back up into its more compact state. Still kind of bulky just the same, but it's much better than it was with the legs all folded out. And you can see now where it gets its trident name from the way the pot stands themselves are formed when they're folded up like that. Um, yeah, it's okay. Now this is the stuff sack that came with the stove and it's just one of the many the Fire Maple has for use with their pots and pans and the like. They didn't make a tailor make one just for the stove, but it works. That's all you can ask of it. So let me just fold the legs out and put it in the operating mode so they fold out and they lock into place as you can see now that is a good size stove that will really support some large pots even better that it has such a wide stance on the bottom I want to draw your attention to the burner I'm going to give you the specifications for it in a moment the burner itself is actually truly impressive this is very much like the burners on a number of the other fire maple stoves that is designed for being protected from the wind the very fact that it's dished in like that has that raised rim and it's quite close to the bottom of the pot, as you can see, well, you'll see when I put a pot on top of it in a moment, that it is quite well protected from the wind. Having said that, I still have a windscreen or I try to block it with something, but I brought a windscreen today because I don't know if you can hear it on the microphone, it has turned more than a little bit windy. Now on the side is the gas control right here. So easy enough, a little lighter or match or spark or whatever you want to do, turn the gas on, hit it, and you're operating, right? Now, here is the attachment point for the gas canister. And uh, people who have used uh, the butane cylinders before know what that looks like. I'll show you in a moment how it attaches. And there's a little shield on top for it to protect the, the gas canister from any reflected heat down from any pots that are that large. Haven't felt the need for it. It's nice to have it. I won't take it off. You know, it's, it's, it's there and it's a good safety feature to have as well. Let me just give you a few specifications for this. Then I'll show you how it hooks up to a or butane gas canister stove. So total weight, 7.9 ounces, 225 grams. So it's not lightweight, but it's made from stainless steel. So it is not an ultra light camping stove. Let's just put that right out there. This is not for people who are looking for an ultra light camping stove, but it has other benefits that I think make it worth looking at just the same. So the width, how do you measure a triangle across? But the diameter is 7.2 inches or 182 millimeters and the height off of the ground is 116 millimeters. That burner, by the way, is rated at 9,205 BTUs or expressed in kilowatts is 2.2 kilowatts. Okay, so that's the specifications for it. Let me just show you how you hook the cylinder up. So here's the top of these butane cylinders and they have a notch in them and a rim around the outside and of course a little valve on the top so that's where the gas would flow out to attach it to this stove or any stove that is designed for use with these it has an attachment point right here let me see if i can put this, point this out and there's a um, what is it called a projection right here that lines up with the notch on the canisters to put it on line them up push and turn and that's it. It's all hooked up and ready to go, just like I said. Now, it's just something quick I want to point out is that this, as you can see, lays flat, lays horizontal like that, and it will run off of uh, 
liquid butane as much as anything because of that, depending on how full the cylinder is. In fact, I did run this with a few other remote gas canister stoves, and it ran into liquid mode very quickly. So my recommendation is if you have an adapter, you want to use uh, one of these canisters, and I'll talk about why you might want to in a minute, my recommendation is have it setting to the side upright. It's much better than trying to run it off of liquid mode because it, it really just flared up very, very quickly. Okay, so that's how... Now, of course, yes, this stove is designed for doing this. It's designed for using it in the horizontal mode, as are pretty much all the butane gas canister stoves that I'm aware of. Okay, so I gave you some specifications, but I want to talk for a minute about the performance of this stove, and then I'll talk about why you may want to actually consider if not this stove, another butane gas stove uh, like it. So I did do some testing. Now the con testing consisted of four different consecutive boil tests. I mean, that's just looking for some consistency and a, a well-known test for performance. And I'll give you what I got on that. So I ran four consecutive boil tests, each with two cups of cold water and uh, I, I know I didn't put starting temperatures in, that some type of thing, but what the average of those four tests was, was two minutes and 30 second boil time. That's impressive. Now, I've got faster stoves, mind you, but this is right in the ballpark for a highly efficient stove, and it consumed five grams of fuel. Now, I'll be honest, I thought it might be a little faster than that, and the reason is, is I had been under the impression that butane is more had packs more heat or more calories per weight than isobutane does. And when I went did a little research, and yes, it does, but not much. Not enough to make a significant difference when you're using it with your stove. So don't look at butane as something that's faster to the boil. That's not the reason for choosing it. Again, I'll get to that in a moment. So, and of course, there, there are other reasons for that. The stove design, the environmental factors, there's any number of reasons, but still, two minutes, 30 seconds, average boil time, five grams of fuel. I'll take that. That's not bad at all. Now, just again, I'm going to dismantle the stove for a second, take the canister off, because I want to talk about butane. Um, butane, why would you even want to try using butane? Why not just continue to go with the isobutane gas canister stoves? They're readily available, and uh, they work well, and they have some distinct advantages over this, but not when it comes to price, and that's what it's all about. So I went to Canadian Tire, and I purchased these. I, they come in a box, or a little carton, I guess, a, a the wrapped in threes, and I paid eleven ninety nine for it. Now I'll get to back to the price in a minute. It's probably going to be cheaper if you're elsewhere in the world, but eleven ninety nine for three of these is the going price at one of our hardware stores. I just keep that in mind. But in the same aisle, actually right next to them, I picked up one of their isobutane gas canisters, and a single gas canister was four ninety nine. Now they're, these are each eight ounces or two hundred and twenty seven gram canisters. This one and the isobutane I picked up. So virtually, um, you know, not half the price, well, yeah, you know, probably half the price or very close to it to buy for one of these canisters compared to uh, one of the isobutane gas canisters. In fact, I think I worked out the cost per gram. Yeah, I did, I did some math here. You can cost per gram. That's, you know, it, it's, I don't know, it's not entirely re relevant, but I got point uh, one seven cents so less than two cents a gram for the fuel whereas the isobutane from the same store same brand sitting right next to it on the shelf ran four cents per gram so it just tells you shows you that this is half as expensive as the other one so you know that's that that's significant and that alone is enough to consider using butane now there are a few downsides. One of the downsides is these are not refillable. Yes, I know you're not supposed to refill isobutane gas canisters, but most of us do. By the way, with an adapter, you could refill it with this, but that's a different story. So yeah, these are not intended to be refilled. And uh, yeah, so you can consider that a relative con, if you will, to them. Um, and here's the big thing. They don't work well in cold weather. In fact, this is the gas that stops uh, or the pressure drops on it most dramatically as the weather gets cold. That's why isobutane gas canisters are out there, is for use in colder weather. In fact, you can get isobutane propane gas canister mix for winter use. And they are, uh, if, if you plan on using your gas canister stove in the coldest of weather, then you want either an isobutane propane or straight up propane uh, gas to operate them on. Propane works at the lowest temperature. This is the first one to stop working, is the butane. 
Now today it's beautiful out here. I'm approaching 18 degrees Celsius, getting quite warm, and this is an ideal fuel for use during the summertime. And there are a lot of stoves that will make use of these. So that's the reason why I was interested in trying it. And you know what? Economically, this is the way to go. I'll probably use more of these. I may try refilling one of the isobutane canisters with these, with the adapters. But uh, at this point, I've got a few of these. I don't need to do it. I just like using it as it is. Um, yeah, okay. Now, I guess you, uh, one of the things is uh, these are a little bit lighter full. I didn't write this down, so I can't verify this, but I need two full cylinders, brand new ones, to weigh them side by side. But I, these are a tiny bit uh, more full or a tiny bit lighter for the same amount of fuel inside. I, I wouldn't call that a deal breaker or enough to make a difference on. It's also the availability, and these are literally probably more available than the isobutane ones. You're gonna to have to go to a sporting goods store. These are often sold in cooking stores and the like because there's a lot of gas stoves, remote single burner gas stoves that operate off of these that people like to cook on. Okay, um, that's pretty much all I have for you. Just a, a quick, uh, review or overview of this stove. You'll see it. You may have seen it already in other videos. You'll see it in future videos. Honestly, if I light it up, you're not going to see it burning anyway, unless I run in a quick to uh, take a little shot of this at home in the dark. Maybe that's what I'll do before I close this video. And uh, let's put that in now. All right, let's demonstrate how the Fire Maple Trident works as far as the flame. I'll be able to turn the lights out so you can see that clearly, and I'll be able to put a pot on top so you can see how close the pot is as far as protection from the wind goes. First, let's light the stove up. I'm going to run it up to full just so you can see what the full uh, power is, but I wouldn't use this all that often. That's not a lot more intense, but let's turn it down, see how low we can get it. And I don't think I'd take it down any lower than that. So it's not bad. It's pretty good low level burning. Let's turn it back up to about one third to medium. Turn the light off. Put the kettle on. Now you can see the flame pattern as it spreads out across the bottom of the kettle. All right, I haven't shown you that little segment. I just put it in between in the closing here. Um, if you have any comments or questions, then put them in the comments section below and all the specifications and the links to where you can take another look at the Trident butane gas canister stove will be in the description as well. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.